Okay, welcome back, survivalists. Today we're taking a look at the latest and greatest tactical and survival gear with Battle Box Mission 85. Let's go ahead and jump right into this. This is March 2022. I am very excited about this box. I get kind of a sneak peek uh, looking at it, and I'm pretty excited about what's in this month's box. So as always, we're going to start with the Pro Box, and then work our way to the Advanced Box, and then the Basic Box. So the first, actually we're going to start with the Pro Plus box. First item in the Pro Plus box is the Wooks Thunderbird Axe Signature Edition. That is this guy right here. Check that guy out. That is a solid hatchet right there. Now they're calling it an axe. I'm not, I guess I'm not really sure what the definition is of an axe versus a hatchet. But that, that looks and feels Pretty solid. It looks like it's a wood handle, which I like. That means you can replace the handle if you ever need to. I mean, wood handles will last you a long time, though. I mean, the wood handle like this could last you 20, 30 years. But yeah, this is beautiful. This feels very solid in my hand as well, like the handle itself. One thing I hate is when you have a plastic handle. Those are the absolute worst for a uh, an, an axe or a hatchet. Because you always, you know, you're always going to come up short at least one time on that long. With those plastic handles, like that head just snaps right off. That can definitely happen with a wood hatchet like this as well. But they're much more versatile. And if you're ever in a real pinch, you can easily replace this, somewhat easily replace this in a pinch. So yeah, I like that a lot. So this is the, uh, let me hold this up and I'll read some of the, the stats about this. So the Wooks produce, uh, producer of a... Exceptional accessories for outdoorsmen made in the USA and Italy. Specially designed the Thunderbird for competitive throwing with a handle made for genuine Appalachian hickory and tempered carbon steel head. The Thunderbird meets all the competition requirements of the International Axe Throwing Federation and is at a home in the wild, chopping, kindling, in winning uh, bragging rights. I love it. Yeah, so I've actually been getting into axe throwing recently. I have. Um, and I even went to an indoor axe throwing rink not that long ago, or indoor axe throwing arena or whatever, and they actually had plastic handles on their axes, and I hated it. I hated that plastic handle because it was so light. Everything was much, all the weight was at the head, and it made it really difficult for me to throw that. So having a wood handle where there's a little bit more weight in the handle, I think is going to make it a lot easier for you to control that spin when you're throwing it. And axe throwing is turning into like a legit sport these days. I really, uh, I'm kind of getting into it. And I actually have an entire like little target uh, outside in my, my house. And I, I bought these cheap little flimsy metal uh, axes that you throw. But nothing like this. This is really what I've actually legit been looking for. So I'm pretty excited about this. And you can go, you can go two-handed like that. Or you, you can do it one-handed. And the trick with axe throwing is that you want to control that rotation and try to get it so it only does one full rotation. Right? And to do that, it all kind of depends on where you release in the arc. If you kind of spin it with your hands or if you try not to spin it, kind of let it slide out of your hands so there's less of a rotation. Very cool, man. I'm pretty excited about this. Um, I just got a couple of tree stumps that I cut into thin, like, four-inch um, slits, sl layers of a tree. And I stick those upright, and then those are my axe throwing targets. Uh, I am excited about this. I legit am. I really wanted to get into axe throwing. Um, so very cool. I'm super excited. I love this little sheath that they have here just for the tip. Oh, so it's rubber. So check that out. It's rubber, so you can actually, like, this is how small it is. And it stretches out. And so that's great for if you're taking this in your car or a backpack or something like that. Very cool. I am super excited about that. I may have to make some uh, some videos about axe throwing. So that is the Wooks Thunderbird Axe Signature Edition. So comment down below what you guys think of uh, the gear as I go along. So we got uh, Grizzly. Gary says... Hello from Finger Lakes region, New York. It's very cool, man. I'm from uh, upstate New York near like Potsdam and Messina, a little bit further west, but I know where the Finger Lakes are. Hackett is smaller uh, and Axe is bigger. Okay. Can you tell the wood grain? So it's said that it's Appalachian hickory is what the wood is made out of. Let's see if you can, can you focus? 
you can kind of kind of see the the texture right there of the the handle it feels really slick they got a nice layer of paint on here so they don't have as many splinters or anything like that i love this little curve that they have you know just like how they actually curve this and kind of design it it is pretty relevant as well and i'm guessing they really designed this to make it easier for you to throw so it kind of slides out of your hands a little bit easier it's very smooth um there's not much texture to to the handle and again that probably would be helpful for axe throwing versus actually chopping but you could totally use this i can totally see you bringing this camping and like just having some fun with the guys just kind of throwing axes at trees um very cool man i'm super excited about this Greetings from the mountains of Western Maryland. Hey, out there in Lake Frederick. I go camping out there sometimes. I am in, I'm closer to Annapolis. Cool, cool. And looks like a nice hatchet high from South Texas. All right. So that is in the Pro Plus box. As you know, Battle Box has Pro Plus box, a Pro box, an Advanced box, and a Basic box. So let's move on to the Pro box. It's just a Pro box. The first item and the only item in the pro box, and of course the pro box is everything else, the the basic and the advanced pro box. You get the my medic trauma first aid kit. So very cool. We've seen my medic before, and what I love about my medic is that they've really kind of simplified this stuff. Like the truth is that a, a trauma kit like this can be a little overwhelming, and I'm willing to bet. I'm, I haven't even opened it up yet. I bet you they've got everything super organized and labeled in there. So I like this design already. So check that out. They have this little flap right here that comes off. I like that. And then zippers on both sides. Uh-oh. Come on, I need my medic kit. And then what? Then this guy opens up. Kind of an elaborate thing there. Okay. Ah, but because it has all that, you can like hang this up and... I guess you could probably hang it up like this more likely and you have access to everything right there and again like what's cool is everything is just organized with my medic i i really like what those guys are doing uh, over there I, I shouldn't say guys what those people are doing over there and so like you open this up here and it tells you right here my medic pack uh emergency pressure bandage right it's even got instructions on the back here of how to use it so it's just nice and compact and simple and organized. I'm going to show you another medic kit that I got in Afghanistan uh, that's not as organized as this. So then they have the rapid tourniquet is also included in this. Focus, there we go. Rapid tourniquet, and they've got some instructions on the back. Now just make sure you're careful with tourniquets. Uh, you could really, like, if you're using a tourniquet when you don't need one, you could cause somebody to lose a limb. So if somebody has just a bad cut on their arm and you're like, oh, I got to put a tourniquet on, you put a tourniquet on up here. If that tourniquet is on them for too long, like a couple of hours, they stop the blood flow to the arm and you have to amputate the entire arm. Um, and I feel like a lot of people kind of overemphasize tourniquets a lot. They should only be really used in my unprofessional opinion, right? Uh, do your own research. Only be really used in cases of arterial bleeding. So bright red pulsing bleeding, that means you cut an artery. That's when you need a tourniquet. Um, you, you see all these like survival videos. Oh, you can make a tourniquet out of your shoelaces and a stick. Yeah, but you don't need a tourniquet most of the time. But anyway, like they, if you have arterial bleeding, you absolutely need one. So that's, that's awesome they have that in there. Uh, they got a couple other, other things here. They got some uh, scissors and what else is in here? Some more space. Oh, they got a space blanket in there. Very cool. Keep people warm in case of hypothermia. I like it. And then they've just got some other stuff. They've got uh, a pen here. All right. I guess I'll go through everything. Let's see. This is some more um, compression gauze. They've got a Sharpie built into it. And so what I love about my my uh, medic kit, kit, is that what it is? My medic, yeah, is that they everything's simple and organized. Let me show you a first aid kit that's not as simple and organized. Hold on a second. All right. So this is one I got in Afghanistan in 2008. 
right? Olive drab, right? Having a meta kit that is bright red, easy to find, that alone is is uh, much better. It's got the Gillies, the um, Molly straps here. But I, this thing can just be really, like, a little overwhelming at times, honestly. Like, this is how the military packages everything. They throw it all into a Ziploc bag. Like, no joke. There's, you know, you got a bunch of military guys putting these packages together. Put it all in a Ziploc bag. They've got a few of these other things, right? they got combat gauze. That's for if you have, like, a bullet wound. It, like, literally, like, it, like expands inside the wound uh, to help you out. And then... I'm not even really sure. So here they've got like everything else, right? Nothing's labeled in here. It's all just these big packages. Oh, here we go. They kind of have what's what's in there, but nonetheless, for this you'd have to like. It's not quite as easy. You have two big bags essentially. You have to rummage through this. All right, what do I need? What do I do? Versus my meta kit, it's nice and easy and organized and labeled. And there's literally instructions on the back of the bag. Like the U.S. military needs this my meta kit stuff. This they could benefit a lot from that. So let me let me stick this all back in here. Right, it's it's simplified. Right, that's that's really what you need. Like you don't want to be going through a Ziploc bag here trying to figure out what you should be doing or where's your your scissors or your your um, turning kit or any of this stuff. All right, I'll put this together later. Yeah, here's my little thing. So 2008, I got this, and I, I'm still holding on to it. So yeah, that's the uh, my meta kit. They go to their website. I, I love what they're doing there. They've just simplified everything. It's a super cool um, the idea to do that, and I, like they're just it's it's just how they design it. I think is just more productive or more efficient. I'd say. All right, so Kathy says awesome. Steve says, use them for head injuries. Tourniquet for head injury? I don't know. I'm not a medic. I don't really know. You know, do your own research. <laughs> but I, I, it just does, does kind of irk me when people over talk about tourniquets just too much. You know, they, they don't quite put in that disclaimer that, hey, uh, you could call somebody to lose a limb whether they needed to or not. All right, so I got this put away. So that is the my medic kit, medic trauma first aid kit, uh, eighty-two dollar value. If you bought about that retail, that's in the pro box. So moving on along, let's go to the advanced box next. In the advanced box item, we have the Lucy Pro Outdoor 2.0. So if you guys watch my videos before, you know I often talk about Luminade and how much how cool I think Luminades are. Those are the inflatable lanterns. And so what this company has done, they've kind of taken that idea, but done their own unique design with it, uh, added a few other features to it. So I'm pretty excited about this because I use my inflatable lantern from Luminade anytime I go hammock camping. I'll bring it with me and I'll put it up on my ridge line. It always has power, almost always. Um, and it, it's just super lightweight and it's creates an omnidirectional light, which I love. And so this company has taken that same concept, a little bit of a different design. So let's see if we can figure out how, how to open up this guy. Um, all right, I'm gonna try. All right, I'm gonna try blowing this guy up. Hold on. Oh God, hold on. First time's always the hardest time. Oh, God. Hold on. Getting lightheaded here. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with that. But I, I mostly got it. All right. So this is it right here. And so one thing with the Luminade, they have kind of like a, um, a film over this. This, they've got it all clear, which I like. They've got the kind of a similar strapping system on the top here, I believe. Right, so you can have this little pouch like this, or a little handle like this. So again, you can hang this from your ridgeline. 
I will say this looks pretty more intense. Um, this feels more solid than the Luminade. Here we go. It's pretty bright. So I would say that the Luminade is a little bit more omnidirectional. So if I put this here, it would cast light in all directions. This is, it's still omnidirectional, but not as much. It's a little bit more directional. Pretty bright. They got a lot of LEDs on there. And look at this. Like I literally just opened up this package. It probably hasn't seen sunlight in forever. And it's still got plenty of light there. So these little LEDs don't take much power and they charge pretty quickly. What I like is this also has a USB port up here on top, and they've got a waterproof cover flap for that. Uh, let's see. Turn that off. And that's actually a pretty big solar panel there um, as well on top. This compared to Illuminate. Let me go find Illuminate, uh, and I'll, I'll kind of show you real quick. Let's see. So here is a Illuminate for comparison. So actually, those are about the same size solar panels, um, I'd say. But you can see that the Luminade has a little bit more of a, a, a film over the body of it to kind of uh, diffuse the light and kind of spread it out a little bit more. Oh, geez. I don't know why that's hard, so hard. So yeah, this is the Lumine. This is kind of the first inflatable lantern that I've seen versus this. So they're about the same size, you know, one square, one's round. And I'd say this is a little bit more directional light than the Luminade. And so maybe you want that though, right? Maybe you want something a little bit more of a, a directional light versus this is just kind of cast it in all, all directions. So I definitely do like this. This is pretty cool, pretty good design, I think. And another nice thing to point out is that you have a bit of a, a mirror on the bottom here. So people are saying that you can actually reflect the light using that mirror. So you could use it as like a signal mirror, essentially, um, which is a pretty cool little idea there. And of course you can, so this feels heavier as well um, than this. And that may mean that it has a bigger battery inside of it. That may be what that means. Like this actual part here is pretty thin on the Luminade. This is pretty thick. So you can use this to charge your cell phone from as well. Um, so you can charge this from a USB port. And you can also use this to charge your other devices. You can do the same thing with the Luminade. Um, and because of this is a little bit thicker, I wouldn't be surprised if this had a longer or larger battery in there than the Luminade. So according to this, this says that it has uh, 25 lumens, cool white LED, lasts up to 24 hours on a charge. 24 hours, yeah. Recharges in seven hours, withstands up to 150 pounds of pressure, lightweight at 4.4 ounces and waterproof. And this guy will run you about $45 for this. The Luminades, they're about the same price as well. That's actually pretty competitive. The Luminade does have like a, a much cheaper version. Uh, they also have more expensive ones, um, but I think this one's about in the 40s as well. So very cool, man. I'm actually pretty excited to kind of test this guy out and see, uh, I don't know. I don't know which one I would like more, if I want the directional light or if I want that more omnidirectional light. Um, and so this is the Lucy Pro Outdoor 2.0. So let's take a few uh, comments here. So we got John John, greetings from the Windy City. Greetings, John. Thanks for joining us. Camping, hiking tip. Uh, Mucinex State, no, Mishox Mish State Forest in PA on the MD Maryland, or the Maryland Pennsylvania border and at the Appalachian Trail runs through it. Very cool, man. I'll have to look that one up. I haven't been to that one yet. Just tuned in. I will watch from beginning. God bless all you in these uh treacherous last days yeah it's a crazy time right now we literally may be in the verge of world war three and i tell you like how many of those ukrainians do you think wish that they, they had been prepping that they had three months of food supplies many of the people in these villages they have no running water no electricity no internet you know nothing They're, they got bombed back to the stone age um they would love to have even just some of the gear that we have here, right? They would love to have three months worth of supply and water filters. And a lot of them just don't. And they're forced to evacuate right now. Pinch the air in. Yeah. 
that's what I what I, what I should have done a little bit more. All right. So that is the uh, the Lucy Pro Outdoor 2.0. Very similar to Luminade, a slightly different design, but pretty cool. I'm kind of excited to play around with that, see how I like it. All right. Now let's go to the basic box, right? So the basic box has four items in it this month. The first one is going to be... No, not that. This guy. This is the Storm Safety Whistle. So the safety whistle sounds a little lame, I know. It's not as fun as some of this other gear, but like the first aid kit, like having a fire extinguisher, safety whistles are pretty important to have in a emergency kit or a survival kit. You know, most survival situations, your goal is just to ride it out until you get rescued. So if you're building uh, a home survival kit, you know, I could easily think of like Katrina. You remember when Katrina hit New Orleans and they had water, you know, 13 feet high, and you had people literally in their attics and on their roofs, and people were driving around in boats trying to rescue them. Just imagine you're trapped in your attic, you know, 13 feet of water, and you see a boat nearby, and you're trying to holler out to them, but you haven't drank water or eaten anything in two days. That's where a whistle comes in handy. Even right now, just imagine if you're in Ukraine and one of these buildings gets bombed or collapses on top of you and the rescuers are there trying to find you, if you had sheltered in place with your survival kit or you had your emergency whistle around your neck, you could holler out to them to help you get rescued. If you're trapped in, I went snowboarding two weeks ago, right? I was up in Colorado, right? I, again, you get trapped in an avalanche or what, what's scary about snowboarding is if you go in deep enough snow where you're on top of like the trees, essentially, the trees are all covered in snow, the trees have these little wells around them where no snow goes. And if you fall into one, you can literally fall to the bottom of the tree. Situations like that or getting lost in the woods is where a whistle will come in handy. And so this one is a crazy design. And apparently, supposedly, this is like one of the loudest designed whistles that are is even on the market. Like there's nothing more loud than this crazy design that they have right here. And they also designed it to be very rugged. So you could have like mud and dirt and debris in here and it could still work very well. So let me give this whistle a try here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it gently at first. That's pretty loud, hold on. Yeah, I'm kinda, my ears are kinda ringing there. I don't know if this, this uh, microphone does this justice. Yeah, that kind of hurts. Yeah, that will definitely get somebody's attention. So let me read some of the stats on this thing. Uh, blah, 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 blah. No, I don't like those stats. Hold on. Uh, this rascal will 100% get the get someone's attention, blah, 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 blah. The same harmonic chamber also acts to protect the whistle from mud, snow, sand, allowing the whistle to even work underwater. The storm is the loudest whistle in the world, capable of being heard over half a mile away. Half a mile away. Oh, all right. I'm done with that. So this guy's only uh, $6.50. If you guys want to go and look this up and buy one of these for your own home emergency kit or your uh, wilderness survival kit, I think having an emergency whistle is definitely a great item to include in there. Here we go. So we got a hello from the Gulf Coast of Alabama. Hope you're all doing well. Thank you. Casual preparedness greetings. Media hello there. Ballot point whistles are underrated by many. They can be a lifesaver. They literally can be a lifesaver. Literally. All right. So the next item is going to be the Compact Provisions BP56. What the heck is that? I'm not even really sure. I think it's like emergency food rations. Let's go ahead and uh, open this guy up here. And again, this is the kind of thing that those refugees in Ukraine would love to have right now. Okay, yeah, this is uh, emergency food rations. So let's see, the box says that what you have here, nine bars per box, calories of 2,300 calories, and a shelf life of five years. This will... This is 2,000 calories right here, which is pretty pretty substantial. That's more than enough for you to go an entire day. This could probably be enough calories for two days uh, if you really stretched it 
And if you're supplementing with something else, right, uh, you could, this could really help out in a lot of situations. So let's go ahead and open this. Yeah, do I want to open it up? I kind of want to keep it. I'll be honest. I'm sorry. <laughs> let's let's read some of the instructions here. So, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. so with this, you get protein, energy, and nutrition you need to survive natural ca catastrophic infrastructure failure, epidemic, shelter in place orders, active terror, and other emergency situations. Better still, for every box of the BP purchase, uh, compact provisions donates one life saving meal to a child in need. So these are $15, and I definitely, these are great things to have in your home emergency kit or wilderness survival kit. SOS also makes some bars that are very similar. There's a lot of other companies out there that make bars similar to this, and they're a great thing to have. Five-year shelf life. So, you know, five years from now, go take it on a camping trip and kind of use them up. But something like this, having some emergency food rations is a fantastic idea. And again, like, if you're trapped in your attic because of Hurricane Katrina, or you're snowboarding and you get stuck in one of these wells and you got to eat something, or you're a Ukrainian refugee, you're fleeing for your life, you know, or even if a building fell on top of you, right? You have something there to kind of consume while you are um, waiting to get rescued. High calorie cookies, essentially, yeah, man. I mean, I guess you could just buy a big box of Oreos. That may do the same. All right, so the next thing is going to be the Harlow Road Candle. Uh, this guy right here. Focus. There we go. All right. So what is this guy? Harlow Road Camp Candles. So a camping candle. Perfect for hiking, camping, hunting, and any other activity where you want to keep the bugs at bay. There are many citronella candles out there to choose from, though most are toxic to humans and pets. They even state uh, this on their labels. Harlow Road Candles are made from pure U.S. farmed soy, lead-free wicks, skin-safe scents, and essential oils. In a pinch, you can even apply the melted soy directly to your skin as a mosquito repellent. When the candle is spent, the container can be cleaned out to provide storage for gear such as matches, cloths, uh, etc. Okay, cool. So this is a camping candle, and essentially it's for a bug repellent. Uh, I love it. Yeah, great idea. You know, I'm, I'm down with that. Very cool. Let's, uh, can I open it up? Ah, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. That it's, yeah, I don't know. It, it smells good. I, I'd like this, you know, especially for like barbecues or something like that. When I have guests over, I could see that being a great thing. I've got a nice big deck that the people are out. Right, this summer, I could let that on the deck. All right, so we got one last thing in this month's box. That is the My Medic Billy Band Bundle. So again, something by My Medic. They, they're doing a bunch of really cool, innovative things over there. This is their Billy Band Bundle. All right, so these, I guess, are Billy Bands. So let me show you, the, show you these real quick. Focus, focus. If I hide my face, it focuses. There we go. My medic has created the simplest, most efficient way to carry your tourniquet for quick access. This reliable design is super affordable and unmatched in terms of rapid deployment and effectiveness. Some first aid items are so important they shouldn't be hidden in a bag, but this is not only for quick access of tourniquets. You can also use these billy bands for attaching other gear like flashlights, chem lights, knives, comms equipment, ferro rod, etc. Pretty much anything to molly equipment, molly surfaces. Designed by the Special Operations Medic and Combat Provisions for Special Force A-Team. Okay, very cool. So, like that? Okay. I think I know how these work. So if you remember, we got these in uh, maybe a box, maybe two months ago, and you attach this to the back of your car seat so you can attach Molly gear to it. And Molly gear is these, these straps right here. This is the Molly gear system. So you essentially feed these through like this, and then you flip it back on. And it's just a great way to attach gear. I'm gonna do it now, but in the military, you have these flak vests with a bunch of Molly straps on it. So I think they're saying essentially that you can use this with Molly gear systems 
And essentially, I think I think it goes like this, and then you have maybe these two guys here that you could, they're elastic, so you can attach something to it. So let me see if I can attach my knife using this. So be something like this. I'm guessing this is how it works. I don't really know, honestly. But it'd be something like this. And you could probably come up with a couple different ways. So something like that, and now you can attach items like your knife or your ferro rod directly to your your flak gear here. And okay, so this one has even bigger loops. And then they've got a couple of different sizes here. So this one's a little bit smaller. I'm guessing that's how that works. I'm not 100% sure, honestly, but I'm guessing that's gotta be something, something like that. Yeah, pretty cool though, man. I, I really am liking my medic. They do some really cool stuff. And so that's everything in this month's Battle Box. So once again, if you guys are really interested in checking out BattleBox, I do have an affiliate link down in the description below. If you use my affiliate link, it does help me out a little bit. I get a little bit of a referral fee for that, a little bonus for that. And I do have links to all of these items down in the description below if you guys want to check those out for yourself. And again, so with the basic box, you, you get the basic box, the advanced box, you get everything in the basic box. And the advanced box, the pro box, you get everything in the basic, advanced and the Pro, the Pro Plus, you get all four boxes combined into, and that's the one that I've got right now is a Pro Plus. Uh, out of all this, I am super legit excited about this hatchet. I may even go and test this thing out today. I would love to get in the competitive hatchet throwing. I think that would just be the coolest freaking thing. So let's take a look at a few more comments before we go. So we have candles, also good in a pinch for heat, light, and cooking. Yes, very true. Uh, candles, yeah, candles are, can be super, candles can actually like heat up your car. If you have a car with just lighting one small candle can raise the temperature of your car by a few degrees, supposedly. Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, South Florida DCL. Um, uh, Hello. All right, guys. So look, I appreciate all you guys tuning in today. Again, I have links to all these things down in the description below, and I will see you next month for the next Battle Box.